Hey there, I'm Annie Dickerson. And I'm Susan Elliott. We're so glad you joined us because on today's show, we're zooming in on why we both chose to invest passively in real estate syndications, which are group investments. We're going to talk about what they are in case you've never heard of them before and how they work. And most importantly, we're going to talk about how they fit into our personal strategies, the lessons that we've learned, and how you can perhaps use real estate syndications to build wealth for your family as well. And you know, when I think back to when I first started investing in real estate syndications, I think one of the best learning tools um, that I found was just looking at other deals. Even if I didn't end up investing in them, looking at those opportunities and understanding what the returns would be, what the deals looked like, what the markets were, taught me so much um, to get to the specifics of what those deals look like. And so if you're in that place and you want to learn more and really see if these opportunities are right for you, I highly recommend that you go to our open deals page on our website. There you can find the current offerings that we have available. And even if you're not in a place to invest right now, you can start to dig in and better understand what these opportunities are about. So to do that, you can go to goodegginvestments.com slash deals. I remember when I realized that I was the kind of person that could invest in syndications. It was as if like a huge weight was taken off my shoulders because I had found real estate investing as sort of an idea of like, how can I put some hustle energy in, some sweat equity, as we call in real estate, to be able to fast track and build up my retirement that I've essentially neglected for a decade as like a 20 something year old who wasn't saving for retirement. And so in my thirties, I was like, okay, real estate investing, this is how to play catch up. Right. Um, and I was like, I have energy. I'm going to put in some, some sweat equity here. And I did that a little bit. I have a couple of um, single family homes. I converted one into a duplex with my husband. We also had a child at this time, which is, was a key component of this because I thought I was sort of like, tapping into my energy of hustle work pre-kids and then post-kids, you you don't have a lot of that energy. And you can, you get it back as I'm finding now with my second kid at two years old, I'm like, okay, I'm coming up for air. It feels like I'm coming up for air, folks. But but I was like, how can real estate, how can I, how can I leverage real estate without feeling like I am constantly developing the processes and systems in every single market that I want to be in. And even if I picked a market that was not my home market, because it's not a good one to invest in for rental properties, but I picked another one constantly finding lenders and contractors and managers and this person and deals and deal flow. And maybe this market's actually shifting and I need to switch. It was just like overwhelming, right? You have to consider that as like a side hobby. And for me, in this phase of my life, I realized that I wanted to use real estate investing. I knew that. And two, I could I could not make this like a side hustle job for myself. Um, and luckily I had spent enough time learning about what syndications were and learning ways that I could invest in them so that it felt less intimidating. But what I hope to help people with is that like when they learn about real estate investing, they can skip that like five years that I spent trying all kinds of different strategies within real estate investing and know you can go straight to syndications. And so that's what this episode I think is about. It's to like skip over that overwhelm moment that I had for honestly, like several years of like, how am I going to sustain this? Um, and know that real estate investing and the returns that are possible are accessible without doing all that work. Luckily, there's this thing called syndications and uh, an entity like Good Egg Investments, right, can, can, can identify, they can use all their expert skill sets of like identifying and vetting properties, of putting together the teams to manage them, to, to vet the whole market. I mean, the entire background of it. Um, and then also bring together and educate everybody along the way to bring together this group of people. So in this virtual digital world, I don't actually have to know my 10 to 20 friends that I'm going to purchase this property with. I just need to know the person that's running the deal. Um, and, th- and know that they need me too. I'm a really integral part of this to be able to purchase this property needs, you need capital. And so these investors are, they're part of the team and, um, and, and so that's basically what a syndication is. And what's really nice, it's a little bit agnostic as to that property. It's a commercial property that you're purchasing. 
And um, it could be, um, you know, an apartment building. It could also be a hotel. It could be other types of commercial real estate that I want to be invested in. I want to take advantage of the returns of the upside of that real estate offers, but I don't want to do the work to be able to put that big deal together where the economies of scale work out such that we all still get really good returns. Yeah, exactly. As I tell people, it's like, you know, the real difference between a syndication and investing on your own in a single family home is with your single family home, let's say you have, let's say you have saved up, let's say $50,000 to invest in a single family home. You do, as we mentioned before, all the things on your own, which is first, it can be really fun, right? You pick the market, you pick the property, you do all the underwriting and you find um, the property manager or you manage it yourself. All of those choices are up to you, which can give you a lot of freedom and a lot of choice. It's like playing real life Napoli. So you get to do a lot of those things. You put a tenant in there and you start getting those checks every month. But if something goes wrong, then you're on the hook for fixing it. So it's a lot of freedom and a lot of choice, um, but also some risk, especially if you're not, if you don't have the time to really put into that, uh, to managing that property. Whereas with a syndication, you have that 50000 but you're you're like, you know what? I don't want to do any of the work. I just want to put this money in. And this is what my friends and family were telling me back in the day. They were like, you're doing all these real estate investments. I want to do that too, but I don't want to do the work. I just have this money. I want to put the money with you. So that's what a syndicate is, right? Yeah. It's the power of community, right? And so I have 50,000, you have 50,000, somebody else has 25,000, somebody has 100,000. And we pool all that together. And as you said, we now we have too much to buy just a single family home. So now we're buying a commercial property together. And we have a company like GoDag Investments who is managing the property on our behalf. So doing all the day-to-day work and making those decisions. And then we as investors get a piece of the returns, both ongoing and as well as on the back end when we sell. So it's like a tidy, neat little way to invest in real estate without having to be, you know, in the day-to-day of it. I like what you said. I'm going to pull out something there for the listener in that it's a good distinction. Like we had too much money for this single family home or a duplex or just a smaller property. And so to go into a larger property, a commercial property is essentially jumping into the realm of now this is a business that I'm investing in. And when you invest in a business, you're investing in the systems and the processes to be able to run that business effectively. What's nice is that we also have real estate behind that business. And it's a business model that most people can really understand. So as opposed to like figuring out, I don't know, venture capital firms that you can invest in, what's the next hot business idea that you can back and potentially, you know, find a unicorn or I don't know what people do when they invest in businesses like that. Because to understand business models can be really a struggle for most people who are are used to, you know, being an expert in their own field. But real estate, again, it's like a business model that we can all kind of understand a little bit more because we all, we have all like lived in different properties. We all have entered different retail facilities, a hotel. You kind of understand how that, that works behind the scenes just by having frequented it. So I don't yeah. want to start a business on my own, right? I want to tap into someone else's business processes who's done this for a long time, who has you know, a track record to be able to show me that like, yeah, these are the properties that we've bought. This is the returns that I've realized for my investors compared to the returns I projected five years ago when we purchased this and be able to tell me that story. That's a huge part of this. So we're going to kind of dive into a little bit of the risks that we see most people talking about with real estate investments. They may not be inherent to every deal, every single one of them, but these are things that you need to weigh. And this is really like your own comfort zone and your own risk-taking strategy of where you're at and you're investing. Um, So these are measured against your own risk philosophy, I want to say. And if you don't yet have a risk philosophy, maybe as you're thinking about your goals, it's a good thing to say like, these are the types of things that feel risky to me with investing just in general. And that's going to help you evaluate these deals and know if they're right for you or not. 
Um, so one thing is that these investments are illiquid. So if I put $50,000 into um, um, a real estate syndication, I cannot pull that $50,000 out at any point that I would like. That money is invested. So as opposed to the stock market, which I might be able to put $50,000 into a money market account, I might be able to pull money out in a month. It may not be 50,000, it might've gone down, but it might've gone up, we don't know, but you can kind of play with that money a lot more. So this is money that you're not wanna, gonna need access to for the lifespan of the hold period. And that leads to another risk is that market fluctuations. And I mean, I think this is a risk of any investment, right? You're investing in something that could go up or down. This is what an investment is. Um, at least in, you know, in the stock market, there's market fluctuations. We have a historical average return of what you might see in the stock market. But if you're looking at a five-year, a 10-year span, that could be across the board. So there's market fluctuations here, but there's the built-in um, sort of safety net that we can hold on to that and wait it out too. Their flexibility is built into to sort of counter that risk that goes into it. Investments that are open to accredited investors, you can you can invest in any of them. Now, if you're non-accredited, meaning you're not yet at those big wealth sort of milestones, you can still do this. And this is thanks to new regulation that's come up with regulation crowdfunding, where there are certain sponsors that allow more opportunities for non-accredited investors. And this is a huge misconception, honestly, that's been busted just in the past couple of years. Right now in this phase of my life, I have no intention of going out and buying a rental property. Um, and I don't know if I ever will again. So whenever we have a certain threshold of cash saved up from that we want to deploy into investments, um, we kind of run it through the gamut of, do we want to put this into an IRA? Do we want to put it into you know these retirement accounts? Um, and then I start thinking about the types of deals that I want to invest in that are going to complement the other deals that I have. So to give you a, um, I do have a couple of of rental property type investments. So that's part of my diversification. I have some money in the stock market and index funds, for example. Um, but then I have some money in a Dallas apartment building. I've got hotels. Um, I've got a, a hotel fund investment as well. And I've got two other apartment buildings in my portfolio that are in Orlando, Florida, as well as in North Carolina. So I'm going to kind of think about where else do I want to do to add to this? What types of deals do I want to do? Knowing that I might have a chunk of change to do this. Um, and then I run through the process of deploying that capital. Um, what I would add here is that another way that I invest is for my kids' college fund. So my kids are only two and six. And so I'm able to put money right now into one of these syndications with pretty good confidence that that money is going to be returned to me before my kids go to college because they're young, right? So I might actually invest in several cycles with my kids' college fund money to be able to then deploy that in. Um, and But as soon as they start to get closer to 18, I may decide to put that in a more liquid type of investment because I'm going to want to be able to pull that out and pay for their college or, or supplement their college fund with it. So that's another way that I, a little bit of a creative way that I invest. Um, and then the third thing I want to say is that I am non-accredited. So I am looking for those regulation crowdfunding offerings to be able to do this. Okay. So with that, hopefully through this conversation, I know we've covered a lot and you might be overwhelmed with all of this, but the good news is you can go back and listen again and take notes. You can also go to our website. There's a ton of information for you there. We've got lots of blog articles. We've got a great start here page. We've got videos for you to, because this is syndications is a, a complicated thing to understand. So you want to not just hear about it once, but really do your due diligence and learn about all the different pieces and facets and perspectives. 